Welcome back to Sons of the Forest. In this video, we are going through everything we know so far, and credit for this information goes to Games Radar. I will leave this article linked in the description if you guys want to go back to it at any time and read it. So this is all the latest news on Sons of the Forest. There's gameplay details and everything like that. We recently covered some news about a possible console release further down the line and also a more specific release date that is seen absolutely everywhere now besides Steam. Steam is still just saying Feb 2023. So Sons of the Forest is one of the most anticipated games for 2023 so far. It is currently sitting in number 6 for most wishlisted games on Steam. The game is set to release in Feb 2023, and what they have done is just massively expanded on the survival experience from the first game, which is known as The Forest. And this game could really, like, if they pull it off successfully, it could really revolutionise not just survival games, but games in general because of some of the stuff they've done. So when it comes to the release date, I've seen it absolutely everywhere, and it's in this article as well. Well, the game Sons of the Forest is going to launch on Feb 23rd, 2023. The game was originally scheduled to release in 2022, in May, then in October, and then in August they delayed the October release and they pushed it back to 2023. What the developers said about it was that they needed time to complete the polish that they feel was needed, and that was all due to the increased scope and fidelity of the experience. So when it comes to the release of the game, the only platform the game will be releasing on is PC. But the developers haven't exactly, like, entirely pushed console releases and everything like that out of the window. They've basically said what they want to do is polish up the PC experience properly and then consider porting it over to console at a later date. The developers confirmed that the game will be priced at $30, so around £25 or something like that. And I think because The Forest launched on PlayStation 4 back in 2018, I think there's a bit of hope that this game will eventually make it over to the consoles. Now when it comes to showing the game off, there have been three Sons of the Forest trailers that have been released, and each of them highlight just how far the developers are pushing the visual fidelity, the depths of its systems, and enhancing the immersion. They've said here that you can watch the most recent trailer above, but it's been age-restricted, so you'll need to be signed into your YouTube account, you'll need to have provided ID and things like that. But if you are signed in and stuff, you can watch the trailer, and I think the reason it got age-restricted is because there was a clip where the player decapitated an enemy and used its head to scare off other enemies, because that is a feature in this game. So the Sons of the Forest gameplay is built on the foundations that helped set the forest up for success. It's an open-world survival game where you are empowered to use the weapons, tools, and environments around you to fight back cannibal mutants and mitigate the effects of the elements. You are going to be able to play this game solo or in co-op multiplayer sessions, and if I remember correctly, the game will support 8-player groups like The Forest did back in 2018. And much like The Forest, the sequel will focus heavily on crafting, cooking and combat, the latter of which has been massively expanded to encompass more weapon types. Guns are going to be more prevalent, so more widespread, although ammo is going to be limited, so Sons of the Forest is going to have a melee focus, but there will be ranged guns in the game. Then when it comes to the story, The Forest, the original game, featured two endings, and this one makes the first canon. There's an older Timmy that's seen struggling to suppress his mutation, and he's investigating an island labelled Site 2. And that's where the story of Sons of the Forest unfolds. You are sent to the remote island to locate a missing billionaire, and you quickly find yourself trapped in a cannibal-infested nightmare. Like the forest before it, this sequel will focus on visual storytelling more so than scripted encounters or lengthy cutscenes, with the core focus being on survival against the horrors of the island. The Sons of the Forest map is going to be roughly four times the size of the playable space that was seen in the forest. The area is loosely based on the Site 2 map that you may have glimpsed at the end of the first game, although it's been subsequently expanded as the developers made it a reality. This survival game is once again set in a Pacific Northwest style environment, although Sons of the Forest will feature dynamic seasons to help introduce more variety. So basically, you're going to get the different seasons and stuff, it's all dynamic and everything like that, 
And as an example of what that can mean in the winter time, it's going to be snowing and stuff. Your berry bushes are going to be a lot more bare. Food is just going to be a lot more scarce. And it's not only going to impact that, but it will also impact the visual design of the island, as I mentioned, like the snow and stuff, but also your approach to survival. And the way it does that is through the food sources we mentioned. I believe I read somewhere that in one of the specific seasons, salmon's going to be really abundant, and then other times it's just going to be scarce. And not only that, the elements are going to alter the behaviours of enemies and they will present further challenges. One of the more significant changes between the forest and the second game Sons of the Forest is a new AI system which developers have dubbed VAIL or Veil, a tool which governs the behaviour of those who inhabit the island. Characters will be impacted by hunger, thirst and their mental state which can alter their routines and reactions to events. Enemies will also have their own ecosystems with your actions helping to influence whether mutants are more likely to stick to the network of underground caves or roam the wilds above. The developer has also teased that the cannibals will find expansive ways to coordinate their attacks and you can even use fear as a weapon against them if you are smart with your resources. So like decapitating an enemy and then showing the enemy's friends as if to say like come near me and I'll chop your head off. There are also companions in Sons of the Forest that you can get to help you out by issuing commands. Those helpers can gather resources and do other time-consuming jobs which will help you out a lot in your survival efforts. So when it comes to playing this game in multiplayer, you can have companions and stuff with you, but you can also have them in solo, so you'll never actually play in this game alone. You'll always have someone there. But not only that, the way that AI works for the companions, at least with Kelvin, who is the first one we got to see, he is a mute character. You command him by using a notebook. He'll go and gather logs and things like that. But if you do mistreat Kelvin, he will become lazy over time and he'll stop helping you out. And his like basically his production is going to be a lot less effective. But if you do not want Kelvin in your game, you do not have to have him in the game. You can kill him off. So like put an arrow in his head or like whatever it is. If you kill the character, he is gone. But for each game session, multiplayer or solo, you are limited to one Kelvin. So you can't start an army of these mute characters. Then when it comes to Sons of the Forest, it's going to feature more robust cooking, crafting and building systems. The developers have introduced a digging mechanic and the ability to use a 3D printer to create more elaborate and complex items, be it to help aid your survival or to create different coloured objects to help you stand out from your friends in multiplayer sessions. The studios also confirmed that it dropped the sanity system entirely as it couldn't find a satisfying way to intertwine it with the core survival loop. Building is still going to be a core focus in Sons of the Forest and you should expect the more grounded series of systems to help further immerse you in the world. For an example, if you want to add a window to the base you're building, just pull out your axe and chop in the space for one. Spears are created by sharpening wood and campfires are created by snapping twigs and lighting them. But not only that, you're actually getting like full-blown animations. You can see this sort of stuff happening as you're doing it. But Sons of the Forest is still a survival horror game at heart. So managing your resources and conditions will still be the key, even as more challenging crafting systems are implemented. So that was the article from Games Radar. There is a lot to this game. If you haven't seen the trailers and stuff, I highly recommend checking them out. I think this game's going to be brilliant, especially if they nail it with polishing the game up. They've had multiple delays now, and they are holding off on a console release, at least for the time being, because they want to polish up the PC experience. This could literally revolutionize the whole of gaming. If they can implement these systems and they work properly, it puts a lot of big developers to shame. So we're going to have to wait and see, but as I said in this video, the release date for this game on PC is going to be Feb 23rd, 2023. It's going to be available on Steam for $30 and around £25, and I cannot wait to get my hands on this one, but that was everything that we know so far about the game. And what we're going to do is leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about Sons of the Forest in the comments, and check out this video if you want to see other content on the channel. I will see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.